welcome to this month's video tech session on using Jeep and Eagle electrical wiring diagrams. I'm going to cover the information you'll find in the wiring diagram section of the service manuals, how it's organized, and how to use it. If you've used the wiring diagram manuals published in previous years for Jeep and Eagle vehicles, you'll recognize some differences right away. For one thing, wiring diagrams are now part of the service manual. Before, they were separate manuals. You'll also notice that each vehicle's service manual can consist of more than one volume. This is just a matter of how much material there is in the service manual each year. For example, for 1989, the whole Premier service manual is contained in one volume. However, for Jeep, Group 8, which is electrical, there's a separate volume. Notice that the wiring diagrams are found in 8W. Wiring diagrams are always part of Group 8, and they're always in 8W as in this Premier Service Manual. Whether Group 8 is a separate book or part of a single volume service manual, it contains service and troubleshooting information for every electrical system on the vehicle. Service manuals, including wiring diagrams, will be released for all Jeep and Eagle vehicles every year about new model launch time. To show you how Group 8 is organized, I'm going to use the 1989 Jeep Service Manual as an example but the organization is the same for other vehicle service manuals. The introduction is found in the front of every service manual volume and contains general information like dimensions, VIN guides, torque specifications, and symbols used in the service manual. One important chart that you'll find in the introduction is this series identification chart. Because the wiring diagrams are organized by series code, you'll need this information to find any specific diagram. The sections within Group 8 cover the various electrical systems on the vehicle, including lighting, controls, components, accessories, and all associated wiring. Within each, you'll find general information, service procedures, and test procedures for that system. Sometimes you'll also find simplified schematics of the system. Now, These schematics, however, don't include the detailed information you'll find in the actual wiring diagrams. To find information about a particular system or component, you can refer to the table of contents in the front of Group 8 or to this index in the back. <music> 8W includes all the wiring diagrams that apply to a particular vehicle line, plus other related information, like electrical component and wiring locations fuse charts, and more. Again, I'm using the Jeep service manual as an example, but the organization of 8W is basically the same for all vehicles. The first few pages contain general information, including wire color code and fusible link charts, hints on using this chapter, and procedures for replacing fusible links. There's also a legend of the various symbols used in the wiring diagrams themselves. If you've used wiring diagrams at all in the past, most of these standard symbols should be familiar to you. Some, however, may be new. For example, this symbol indicates a mercury switch. This diamond-shaped symbol with a number inside it is a splice. A symbol like this always indicates a multiple connector, like the bulkhead disconnect. The number next to it refers to a specific cavity number. It tells you where the circuit you're tracing goes. The next few pages contain fuse charts. Like the wiring diagrams, these are organized by series code. For example, this first chart is for Series 80 vehicles, two-wheel drive Jeep Wranglers. Each chart lists the fuses by number, tells you the color and amperage rating of the fuse, and what circuits it feeds. There's also an illustration of the fuse block to help you locate individual fuses. The connector charts that follow are similar. They list each cavity number in the connector followed by the color of the wire leading to that cavity and a description of its purpose. An illustration is provided as a guide to locating individual cavities. Next, there are a number of component and wiring illustrations to help you locate wiring and electrical components on the vehicle. This index will help you locate the specific illustration you need. The illustrations are organized by series code and listed by figure number. 
They may include several different views and detailed art as necessary to help you locate the wiring and components in each individual system. For example, suppose you want to locate the fuse block on an 80 series 1989 Jeep. First, check the component identification index to find the instrument panel component illustrations, which are figures 10 and 11. There's the fuse panel, located below the instrument panel on the left side. The next group of illustrations are similar to the component and wiring illustrations, but they show the location of splices instead. To find the illustration that shows the splice you're trying to locate, refer to the splice index at the beginning of this area. Each page illustrates a different area of the vehicle, with all the electrical splice locations called out. Finally, you'll find the wiring diagrams at the end of 8W. Remember that they're organized by series code and listed by sheet number, not page number. For each series, the sheet numbers start over at sheet number one, and there's a separate alphabetical index for each. Although in this 1989 Jeep manual, 60 and 70 series vehicles are combined, so it's important to notice the series number on each sheet. For example, this sheet, number 63, contains the radio wiring diagram for the 70 series, while this one, sheet 66, shows the radio wiring diagram for the 60 series. Remember, don't confuse the series and sheet numbers at the bottom of each page with the page numbers at the top of each page. All right, I'm going to the Cherokee now to show you a quick example using the wiring diagrams to locate wiring or components. Let's say I needed to check the fuel pump ballast resistor. First, I check the index for 60 and 70 series vehicles. Uh, here, the ballast resistor is shown on sheet 21. Now, don't forget that wiring diagrams are listed by sheet number, not page number. Okay, here's the ballast resistor. We can see that there are two orange and black wires connected to it. One comes from splice number B11, and the other leads to the fuel pump through splice B1 and cavity C4 of the bulkhead disconnect. By the way, there's a wire color code chart at the front of the wiring diagrams if you're not sure about any of the abbreviations. It lists all the wiring color abbreviations and the colors they stand for. It also lists the standard tracer color for each wire. When a single wire color is followed by an asterisk, like this, it indicates that the wire has a tracer, which is the standard color. In this case, it would be a violet wire with a white tracer. Some of the other symbols used in this diagram include this splice symbol. Remember, the number inside the diamond identifies the splice. If I wanted to locate it on the vehicle, I could look it up in the splice location illustrations. This symbol indicates a relay. In the box next to it is a guide to the relay connectors. The circuit ground is shown as part of the general wiring diagram. There's no separate ground distribution diagram. Notice that the location of components is also identified. For example, the wiring diagram indicates that the ballast resistor is located near the air filter. If I needed a better reference to find it, I could refer to the engine compartment wiring illustration, which provides a drawing of the actual component. Here's the ballast resistor on this 4-liter Jeep Cherokee, just like it's shown in the manual. Another thing you'll see in the instrument panel wiring diagrams are these representations of the various printed circuits. All right, now that we've looked at how the electrical section of the service manual, including wiring diagrams, is organized, I'm going to perform a sample diagnosis of an electrical problem. The only tools I'll need are the 1989 Jeep electrical manual and this digital volt ohmmeter. Now, I've connected a battery charger so the battery doesn't drain during testing. Of course, I'll also need to use the proper diagnostic technique, namely the six-step electrical troubleshooting procedure. First, let's look at the customer complaint. Okay, the vehicle is a Jeep XJ equipped with optional fog lamps. Neither of the fog lamps is working, but the instrument panel lamp lights when the fog lamp switch is turned on. Well, the first step in the six-step troubleshooting procedure 
is to verify the customer complaint. So I'm going to start by doing just that. To operate the fog lamps on this Jeep XJ, I should just have to pull the headlamp switch to the on position, and then switch on the fog lamps. OK, the indicator lamp here on the instrument panel lights when I turn the switch on. The fog lamp should now be lit. However, neither fog lamp is on, so I've verified the customer complaint. When the fog lamp switch is turned on, the indicator lamp lights, but the fog lamps don't come on. All right. The next step in the six-step troubleshooting procedure is to check for any related symptoms. Well, we already know the other lamps that feed off the headlamp switch work. The headlamps, parking lamps, and side markers are all on. It appears that the two fog lamps are the only ones not working. So let's look at the wiring diagrams to determine what other related symptoms we expect to find. Before we do any checking in the electrical group of the service manual, remember that the information is organized by series code. So my very first step is to check the series code for this four-door, four-wheel drive Jeep Cherokee. According to the chart in the introduction chapter, its series code is 70. Once you get used to them, you shouldn't have any trouble remembering these series codes. But remember, you can always find an identification chart in the introduction chapter of the appropriate service manual. We can find the fog lamps quickly by looking in the alphabetical index at the front of the 60 and 70 series wiring diagrams. Now, remember that wiring diagrams are listed by sheet number, not page number. Sheet numbers are in the lower outside corner of the page along with the series number. Sheets 33 and 34 have the diagram we want for this 70 series Jeep. Huh. Now, because both fog lamps are out, one possible cause might be this relay, which controls both fog lamps. We can check the relay easily enough. Let's go check it. We'll turn the switch on and off while listening for relay operation. Let's try it. Now, we should be able to hear the relay click on, but it doesn't seem to be working. I can check to see if the relay itself is faulty by checking for power at the relay connector with the fog lamp switch still in the on position. According to the wiring diagram, the feed from the fog lamp switch goes to cavity 5 of the relay. OK, I'm ready to check for power to the relay connector. The front lighting component illustration in the service manual shows the location of the relay here on the left-hand side of the engine compartment. And there it is. Now, I just remove the relay and check for voltage at cavity 5. Huh. Nothing at all. It looks like the problem isn't the relay. OK. I verified the customer complaint and check for related symptoms. In the process, I found that there's no power to the fog lamp relay, even with the fog lamp switch turned on. The next step in the six-step troubleshooting procedure is to analyze the symptoms. Here, the electrical manual wiring diagrams will again be a big help in our diagnosis. Also, it's important to remember what wasn't wrong. That is, that the headlamps and other front lighting worked normally. Because there seems to be no power to the relay, a fuse might be the problem. We can use the electrical wiring diagrams to quickly check that possibility. As you probably remember, fuse panel charts are located in the front of Chapter 8W, the wiring diagram chapter. In the fuse panel chart for 60 and 70 series vehicles, we see that one fuse, number 15, feeds the headlamp switch, the instrument panel, the rear lamps, and the front lamps. So even without checking the fuse, I know that it can't be the problem, because the same fuse feeds both the fog lamps and the other front lamps. To analyze the problem further, let's look at the wiring diagram again, this time starting with the fog lamp switch. I found the proper wiring diagram sheet, number 38, by checking the index again. Now, let's use this diagram to analyze what we already know. We know that the indicator lamp lights when the fog lamp switch is turned on. That means that there's power to the fog lamp switch. As the diagram shows, the same wire feeds both the indicator lamp and the fog lamp relay when the switch is on. So 
By analyzing the symptoms, we know that the problem must be somewhere between the fog lamp switch and the fog lamp relay. Isolating the trouble is the next step in the six-step troubleshooting procedure. Again, the wiring diagrams can help. Because I know that there is power up to the fog lamp switch, I can start tracing the circuit beyond the switch. According to the wiring diagram, one possible place to check is at the bulkhead disconnect, cavity G1. Remember, if you need to know the location of any component, connector, or splice, you can refer to the diagrams in the front of 8W. As you can see here, the bulkhead disconnect is located on the driver's side of the engine compartment. All right. Now, I'd have to remove the windshield washer reservoir to reach it. And it still looks like it'd be tough to check the correct cavity. Let's see if it's any easier to check from the passenger side of the bulkhead disconnect. OK, according to this illustration in the service manual, I'd have to remove the fuse panel to reach the bulkhead disconnect from that side. So let's check the wiring diagram again to find the next place we could check. All right, circuit F5 leads from the bulkhead disconnect to the fog lamp relay. Here the diagram refers us to another page, either sheet 34 or sheet 36. In our case, it's sheet 34, which has the diagram for the 70 series front lighting. Wire F5 from the bulkhead disconnect goes to this 10 cavity connector located behind the left hand headlamp. Because it's easier to get to, I'll try testing at the connector. Well, I should be getting close to the source of the problem now. OK, there's the connector. Hmm, there's no power on the relay side of the connector. I'll try the switch side. But there is power on the switch side. That means the problem must be in the connector. So I'll turn the power off and take a look. I think I've isolated the problem. This pushed out terminal is probably open in the power circuit to the fog lamp relay. So I can go ahead with the next step in the six step troubleshooting procedure by repairing the problem. In this case, the repair is fairly simple. There, that should do it. Well, I fixed the pushed out terminal. Now for the final step in the six step troubleshooting procedure, verify proper operation. Okay, here goes. The indicator lamp still works, and the fog lamp should be on now, too. They are. Good. That verifies proper operation. With the help of the wiring diagrams for this Cherokee and the six-step troubleshooting procedure, I've completed the diagnosis and fixed the problem. There are many other instances when you'll find the wiring diagrams handy. For example, when diagnosing a condition with a DRB2, you may need to refer to the wiring diagrams to pinpoint a short or open in a particular circuit once the tester has narrowed down the problem. The main thing to remember is that the wiring diagram section of the service manual is a useful tool if you know how to use it.